Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again today. In this video, we are going to be dealing with this tank. This is my Fahaka puffer, and we are going to be creating the perfect puffer paradise. So I got this guy a few months ago now from Maidenhead Aquatics when he was really, really tiny. He was kind of like the size of a pea puffer. And he's grown on fine, and he's doing everything a puffer should do, munching on snails and all kinds of things. I've got him pellet trained as well now, which I'm really happy about. But it's time to get them into a bit of a bigger tank. And I'm thinking of this one. This was the tank that I was keeping my discus in. Um, I keep saying it's a five foot tank, but it's not, it's a four foot tank. It should be a great size for a long time. Maybe not his final home. I'd ideally like to get him into a five foot tank when he's super big, but this will do for a long time. I'm gonna get it scaped out and we're gonna get him moved across. But before we do that, I thought I'd give a wee feeding of these guys. So everyone's been asking to see a feeding video of, ugh, lovely. Massive big poop by <laughs> the flag tail. Uh, everyone's been asking for a feeding video of this tank, so I thought I'd show you that as well while we're doing it. I like to go with a mix of different foods. Number one is this. This is the Massivore Delight by Hikari. Um, this is still my favorite ever bit of marketing. The equivalent of 1.8 goldfish per pellet. Perfect. I have that, I have the Sinkling, Sinkling, Cichlid Gold pellets as well. And then on occasion, I like to give a mix of different kinds of seafood and I've got some broccoli today. So a lot of these fish in here like and appreciate a bit of plant matter. So I've just got some frozen veggies today. It's broccoli, cut them all up. Don't need to be too precise about this because they're big fish and they don't mind the big bits and having a go at them. It's not cooked. It's raw, but they seem to like it. So I'll go with a couple of bits of these. What tends to happen here is Gordon will try and grab them. Gordon is my emperor snakehead and realize, oh, I don't actually like broccoli. He's a bit like most kids. And then the giant garami and the flagtail and the silver dollars all like a bit of veggies. And then we give Gordon a bit of the seafood. This is things like squid, prawn, mussels. Um, I don't like to feed a lot of mussels and things like that. But as a treat, it's fine, preferably cooked. Then we don't run the risk of thymonese issues. Again, chop it up a bit rough. Some octopus as well. And give them a wee bit of that. So puffers are a, a favourite of mine, I've kept many of them over the years from pea puffers to fahakas and a mabu at one point, that didn't end so great but we've got the this one here, a fahaka at the moment, who's playing camera shy for some reason. Um, he's probably four and a half inches, maybe touching five inches, uh, eating readily and usually quite active and quite interactive but I don't know, he seems to be having a bit of a problem with the camera today, so fine. Um, but yeah, he's a lovely specimen, eats well, nice and plump, usually very active. I think he knows there's changes afoot, so that's why he's a bit reticent to come out and say hello today. Um, but I've just put in a little bit of prawn, but he mostly feeds on snails, um, the occasional treat of some uh, frozen fish food, some worms, earthworms chopped up, some clams, and his staple is the Hikari cichlid pellets. I like them because they're quite hard and he usually eats them so fast that because they're quite hard that will be doing something for his beak. So puffers like this, they have a bit of a beak um, which if you don't offer them lots of hard food um, can lead to something needing some trimming doing and we don't want that. So this is, this is just a little bit of a treat for him. Doesn't usually get this kind of thing. But like I say, he's a, he's a good eater and that's what you want from your fish. You want them eating nice and readily. Um, really nice colouring, really nice temperament. Hasn't tried to chew my knuckles off like some of my other puffers have tried to do. Um, I've tried to keep some plants in this tank. I wanted to actually keep them in a planted tank, but he seems quite fond of them for dinner rather than decoration. So probably just going to go with a hardscape tank. So 
that's what I've got planned today. We've got some rocks down here. I've got my other rocks and twigs and things like that down here. I'm going to get some of them up. I'm going to try and create like a kind of island effect and leave a lot of swimming space because they do like to burrow and bury themselves in the sand. So I've got quite a deep sand bed. Let's get that built up and see if we can get something that looks good for both of us. I've got the larger rocks in there all positioned, but I want some kind of accent rocks. I'm going to take one of the bits of dragonstone. Most of this is dragonstone. I'm going for a big mound um, and lots of open space. So I'm just going to smash this up with a hammer and get some little accent stones. Safety squints on everyone. Right, there we have it. It's been filled up for a couple of hours now. I've gone with a few plants, so I'm fully expecting these to get nibbled. So that's why I've chosen things like Java Moss and Java Fern, Limnophilia sessiflora, because they grow so fast it doesn't matter if they get a bit nibbled, and I've got lots of them, so we can sort that afterwards. So it's mostly hardscape. I've gone with a big pile of rocks to the side, which is really just given a couple of overhangs and caves. Hopefully where it can hide, not get stuck. I've tried to make sure there's no tiny gaps that you can squeeze into. Uh, and then lots of open space for swimming around, wallowing, doing whatever he wants to do. And we should be good. So, I've got the water up to temperature. There's still a few bubbles in the glass, so we might wipe them down. But I think we're good to go and we can get them in. So, it's generally accepted that the best way to move puffers is to not get them out of the water. So get a big jug, I've got one of these big cups here that I think will probably fit in because I'm only going to move them from there to there. All the water parameters are matched, so it's just a case of getting them in there. Shameless plug time, I noticed that Maidenhead Aquatics have a sale on at the moment, so if you're interested in some Fluval lights, I believe it is, they've got 10% off them at the moment. I will have an affiliate link down below. You can check out the Maidenhead website, there's loads of good information on there. You can peruse all their products and all their know-hows and get light timers, things like that. Link in the description, get you 10% off some Fluval lights. Anyway, it's probably quite good that the lights have gone off because it's always a little bit less stressful moving fish with lights off. So we're just going to usher them into the cup. I say that as if it's going to be easy. He's down in this corner at the moment. I'm hoping I can just do this fairly fast and easy without freaking him out. Immediately, no. It is what I want to do though. So let's see if I can still guide him but using the net. There we go. Not too much fuss. So then if he does puff up, he's puffing up in the water and I don't have to worry about getting air out of him. And then we'll get him straight into this aquarium. Like I say, it's the same water, same temperature. Should be as stress-free as we can do it. Be free! Enjoy your big new home. I've given him half an hour or so, put the lights on just so as you can see how he is. He'll probably do this for a few hours, sulk in the corner, so I'm going to switch the lights off again and leave him till the morning. As you can see he looks tiny in this big tank, so plenty of room to explore. I do want to get more plants for over there, but I'm going to give him a little while to see whether or not he does attack all these. At least we've got a bit of greenery going on in there. A few plants is better than no plants. Uh, and exciting news coming to the channel, we should be getting shipment of plants in soon. And maybe offering them for sale on the website. So there you can see, there's, there is his stress colours where he goes that little bit darker. Tries to hide out. But he should be fine in no time at all. So if you're interested in finding out how he gets on, come and join me on a Friday night, 9pm UK time, we do a live stream every Friday. Come and say hello, I'll share updates and that kind of thing. And if live streams aren't your thing, just click that subscribe button, click it anyway, but click that subscribe button and you'll get some updates of all the things that are going on here. We've got a few changes coming up, so there should be some good stuff coming. Thank you for watching, see you in the next one. Bye!